morning, everyone, and welcome to worship for Trinity Lutheran Church and Silverton United Methodist Church. Uh, we are beginning a new worship series today entitled Entrusted, and throughout this series, we will learn how, as a part of the body of Christ, all of us are entrusted with responding faithfully to God's call in our lives. One of, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, we're going to go on a holy scavenger hunt. If you haven't already set up in your worship space that you are viewing us from, um, if you would like to get a piece of bread and some juice or wine for communion later on, you can do that now. And if you don't have a candle, you can go grab a candle and something to light it with. There will be a time in our worship service where we will light a candle together. <clears throat> the second bit of housekeeping is um, uh, with the new Zoom uh, modules, we can do some formatting on how you see our uh, worship service today. And so one of the ways you can do that is when we're sharing a screen, you can go up to the right hand section of your screen and there's two different places you want to um, click on. The first is view and you want to make sure you're on either side by side speaker or side by side gallery. And what that'll do is you can see the um, slides that we're showing on uh, one side and then you can see either me or everyone on the other side. And then the other one is go up to view options when Michael is sharing a screen and you can click, make sure the check mark is in front, front of side by side mode. So that's just a little bit of uh, new information, new things that are available to us with Zoom um, that will make viewing worship a little easier on you. I personally do side-by-side -side gallery because I like to see all of your beautiful faces when Michael is sharing the screen. So, And you can make the screen a little bit smaller so that you can see more people. You can slide it back and forth now. Those are things that are available to us on Zoom. Just a reminder that we are recording this service so we can make it available online later this week to, for those who miss worship. And I invite you to fill out the Google form to say that you were here. Marshall has already put it in the chat. And if you would like to schedule a meeting with me, you are welcome to do so by uh, calling or emailing me at the links that Marshall shared in the chat. On Saturday, we have a little bit of a busy week this week. Um, so on Saturday, we have the annual trunk retreat that Silverton United Methodist Church is, uh, participates in. We're doing it differently. It's going to be a drive-through, contact-free um, trunk or treat. There's lots and lots and lots of treats for kids. So if you have a kid that you love in your neighborhood or in your world or your bubble, your COVID bubble, you can bring that child in the car, drive through our parking lot. They'll be able to pick up four bags of candy or treats, um, four items that they can pick up throughout the um, parking lot. We also need a few more trunks. So if you would like to be a trunk, we have plenty of space to spread out safely. All you have to do is decorate your trunk. You don't have to bring candy or anything like that because we're going to hand them out in our previously um, already packaged and they're in quarantine right now at the church, um, getting safe and ready for um, the next step, which is to hand them out to the kids. That's going to be from three o'clock to five o'clock. And if you are a trunk, if you could please make sure that you uh, come to the parking lot by two o'clock so we can set you up. We have a map on how we're going to set people up and uh, we would love for you to come and do that. The next announcement is going to be about the following day, November 1st. At Trinity, we are going to have an All Saints Labyrinth. There will be four different stations or five different stations where people can walk throughout the um, field at Trinity. And there will be uh, luminaries and uh, people will be able to 
uh, safely distance outside um, and light some candles on behalf of the families who, uh, if you've lost a family member this year, or if you want to just remember the over 220,000 people who have died of COVID in the United States this year. So that will be from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock on November 1st. We ask that you wear masks and you remain socially distanced. And remember to change your clocks as well <laughs> on November 1st. Uh, actually, you can do that um, after you go to the trunk or treat. You can change your clocks. <laughs> Don't do it until after the trunk or treat or you will be <laughs> really early, late, late, early fall back. So they'd be early. Late for the trunk or treat. Early for, yeah, anyway. Early for Christmas. Just early for Christmas. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for continuing to give to the church in a uh, variety of ways by mailing a check to the church, setting up automatic bill pay, um, and if you would like to, you can give online through either of the church websites. Um, Marshall has put those in the chat. And he also put a reminder in the chat to remember to set your clocks back next Saturday night. Thank you. <laughs> Let us begin worship as we center ourselves. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Psalm 95, 6-7a You are invited to light a candle to bring the light of Christ into the world. Grace-filled God, you have entrusted each of us to embody your call in our lives. Help us to grow and learn in ways that encourage others to do the same. Amen. As people of God, what have we been entrusted with? How are we living that out? Scripture encourages us as Christians to accept the mantle of responsibility for the work to which God entrusts each of us as part of the body of Christ. Rooted in the past and growing in the future, the church must always be reformed in order to live out the love of Christ in an ever-changing world. We are stronger when we all work together to do our part as the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. You are invited into a time of silent centering. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. 
we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear these words of pardon. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit. Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. I invite you to sing with us joyfully, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And if you can name that castle, you are a super Lutheran or Methodist, just so you know. <laughs> Him 
himself fights by our side with weapons of the spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, the life be wrenched away. win the day the kingdoms are able to identify that castle that was in the background there that is Wartburg Castle which we are going to learn about during the children's time right now do you know what is special about today why all of these vestments are are red can you think about why and why we sing that song it's Reformation Sunday. Today, we are going to hear a story about Martin Luther, who was part of what we call the Reformation, a time in history when people stood up to the things in their society and in their churches that were unjust toward people who were poor specifically. Let's hear the story of Martin Luther. The Life of of Martin Luther by Agostino Traini. Many years ago, there lived a young man named Martin Luther. Young Martin was studying to be a lawyer, but one day he got caught in a terrible storm. He was so afraid that he promised God he would become a monk if he escaped the storm. The storm died down, and Martin Luther kept his promise. Martin Luther devoted his life to God. He began studying the Bible, where he read for himself what it said about having faith in Jesus. In his reading, Martin discovered the very good news that we are saved by faith alone. Martin Luther didn't like what the church was teaching about faith and good works. He especially didn't like the teaching that Christians could go to heaven faster by paying money to the church. So he wrote down 95 theses explaining his disagreements, then shared them for others to read. Not everyone agreed with Martin Luther's ideas. They were so mad that they brought him before the Holy Roman Emperor and asked Martin to take back everything he said, but he refused and stood by his beliefs. Martin Luther's life was in danger. On the way back to his home, the carriage he was riding in was surrounded by riders. Were they enemies? No, the riders were friends. They'd come to take Martin away to a castle where he would be safe. Martin Luther kept writing his ideas about God, grace, and faith. His writings were printed and spread far and wide. He even translated the Bible into German so that ordinary people in his country could read it and think about it for themselves. Martin Luther inspired a reformation of the church. Many women and men followed in Martin's footsteps by introducing new ideas and big changes. Even today, Christians reform the church as we read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow Jesus in faith. Wow. Martin Luther responded with grace and stood up when he saw things that weren't just. He also helped many people be able to have access to the Bible. What are some ways in our own community that you see people standing up or speaking up for what is good and just. Can you think of some ways? Perhaps you saw a week ago a parade that went through town as we honored people who stood up to help during our time of need, during the fires that came so close to our city. 
or perhaps you saw your parents or grandparents send in their ballots to vote so that they can make their voices heard. This week, as you are going about your world, I invite you to stand up or use your voice to speak up for what is good and just. Let's say a repeat after me prayer. Gracious and loving God. Gracious and loving God. You entrust us with so much. You entrust us with so much. Learning new things. Learning new things. Helping others see joy. Helping others see joy. Lifting each other up. Lifting each other up. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today, our first scripture today, uh, is from Paul. And Paul's words in Romans stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders like John Wesley, who happened a couple hundred years later. No human beings make themselves right with God through the works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's read Romans chapter 3 verses 19 through 28. Now we know that what the law says is said to those under the law. Therefore, let every mouth be silenced and let all of humankind be open to God's judgment. This is because we are not justified in the sight of God by keeping the law. Law only makes us aware of sin. But now the justice of God has been manifested apart from the law, even though both law and prophets bear witness to it. The justice of God works through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. There are no exceptions. Everyone has sinned. Everyone falls short of the glory of God. Yet everyone has also been undeservingly justified by the gift of God through the redemption wrought in Jesus Christ. God presented Christ as a proprietary sacrifice for the atonement of all who have faith in Christ's blood. And God did so manifest divine justice because God showed forbearance by remitting sins committed in the past in order to demonstrate divine justice in the present, so that the Most High might be both a just judge and the one who justifies those who believe in Jesus. What room is there then for boasting? It is ruled out. In what law do we boast? The law of works? No, only the law of faith. We maintain that one is justified by faith apart from keeping the law. Our next scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. Jesus, in this text, speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. Jesus reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. Jesus said to those who believed in him, if you live according to my teaching, you are, really are my disciples. Then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We're descendants of Sarah and Abraham, they replied. Never have we been the slaves of anyone. What do you mean by saying you'll be free? Jesus answered them, the truth of the matter is everyone who lives in sin is the slave of sin. Now a slave doesn't always remain part of a household. An heir, however, is a member of that house forever. So if the heir, the only begotten, makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be 
to God. So friends, the Reformation began over 500 years ago. It's weird to say that because when I began in ministry, it was not quite 500 years ago. So it's kind of weird to say it's been over 500 years. But it continues through each time in history. And we, every time we speak about all that we have been entrusted with, Reformation happens. Reformation continues when we ask, how are we living out our faith? How are we speaking the truth of Scripture? In our scripture text today from John, we are mere spectators among, uh, along with the fellow believers of Jesus' day. Like them, we are trying to puzzle and understand how Jesus matters in our life and in our daily living. Now, I don't know about you, but I have been very overwhelmed by the world around me lately. And Jesus sees and knows that we are overwhelmed when we neglect the core to which our faith is rooted. Sometimes when we can't see anything else, we don't see our faith or God. We forget how as baptized children of God, we are called to follow Jesus's example in the world. And so ever gently, Jesus reminds us and his followers, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. Let's unpack that for a minute. It doesn't mean if you read these prescribed scriptures every Sunday at worship or read these scriptures in a daily email, you will truly be my disciples. Doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean if you are a member of a certain church meeting in-person worship or doing worship in a specified way, you are my disciples. Rather, it means that we are following and continuing to dwell in God's living and dynamic word, not by memorizing or utilizing it for personal collective gain, but by dwelling and sitting with the word that reveals what our souls desperately crave, freedom. You see, all of us, no matter who we are, are slaves to sin. And it's not just huge, gigantic sins for most of us. Some of the well-known well ones like murder or adultery or stealing, it's not those usually. But every time I don't scroll past that Facebook post that I know I shouldn't answer in a snarky way, but I do anyway, I am a slave to sin. Please don't tell me, please don't tell me I'm the only one who does that. <laughs> but the good news is that Jesus brings, the good news that Jesus brings is that being a disciple of Jesus Christ brings new awareness, new understanding, a new way of knowing who and what we are called to be as children of God, as heirs of God's kingdom. It gives us the realization that we can stand up to sin, stand up to injustices in the world, it grants us, it grants the world the promise of liberation, transformation, and freedom. That freedom is what Martin Luther was talking about so many years ago when he put on those tours those 95 theses those rules, those, those commentaries that he had on what was going on in his world around him. Martin Luther and the Reformation taught that it matters that every time a mem every member of the human, cre human and created family is not bound by systemic evil, by historical and sociopolitical constructs that deny dignity to some and grant privilege to others. We're not bound by those things. Bishop Leela Ortiz, who serves as the Met bishop for the Metropolitan D.C. Synod of the ELCA, says this in her commentary on John chapter 8. It matters that people and communities are not theologically and institutionally enslaved 
to an oppressed and oppressive way of being, thinking, and behaving. It matters that those who claim to believe in Jesus not fall in the trappings of the enemy and mistaken the God of the universe as one who places conditions on God's love, grace, and salvation. The Reformation Sunday, I hear Jesus' words saying, continue in my word, be my disciple, and know the truth, because freedom matters. It matters that you, your people, creation, and systems be set free. My truth will set you free. Think about the freedom that we as ELCA and United Methodists have to offer our community of Silverton. We know, or at least I hope you know, that we do not need to work out our faith. We do not have to chase and choose Christ on a daily basis. We don't have to live in fear of a pursuit that if only we are good enough, we will garner God's attention so that we are saved from whatever eternal damnation happens. God's love and grace isn't conditional. It is not conditional. It is not based on what we can or cannot earn. One of my uh, very anxious children this week asked me what they could do to earn presents and gifts for Christmas. (laughs) It's only October. (laughs) But as I looked at that child who so earnestly asked this question, I looked at that child squarely in the eye and said that the amount of presence you get or don't get is in no way a reflection of how much I love you. I told that child, we love you. We love you unconditionally, and there is nothing you can do or say to make that love conditional. It is the same with your relationship with God. We don't have to do certain things or behave a certain way to earn God's love. I said it a few weeks ago, and I will say it again and again and again. Nothing, nothing separates you from the love of God in Jesus Christ. You are a beloved child of God. Reformation in today's world means that we stand up at the rooftops and we shout that everyone is a beloved child of God. We stitch it in our quilts, we serve it in the meals we serve, and pack it in the snack sacks, and we water it in the garden. And we say it every Sunday, over and over and over again until people finally get it. We are free. You are free with the truth of God's unconditional love and gift of grace in Jesus Christ. I can't think of anything more reformational than that message. And may we know the truth and be set free with God's help and in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you into a time of prayer with the confidence in God's grace and mercy. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Now we're starting a new series, so we have a new prayer song that we will sing before and after our worship, our prayer time.
God, renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God, where the church is in error, reform it, where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it, where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite us in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. As the earth changes, as mountains shake and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Release those live, oh, guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all in it harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing and of touch to all those who are ill. We lift up prayers for Brad Benson, who is on hospice care from Lou Gehrig's disease, and Bernie Palmer at stage four cancer. May God grant them strength and peace in their last days. We lift up all prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks for courageous voices that have reminded firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up prayers for Marjorie's granddaughter, whose daughter Olivia died of SIDS a couple of weeks ago. And we lift up prayers as we ask for God's guidance, as we cast our ballots. And we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for the healing of uh, Sylvia's friend, Marianne. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Even in death, God, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, who have stood up, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold your loving arms for all all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As the song invites us, uh, mm, that's weird. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> As the song invites us, there are many ways that God is glorified. One is the consistent offerings that we have given to God throughout this pandemic. 
And we are so grateful that it's not just our financial offerings, but it also are the offerings that we give of our time and the fruits of our harvest to ensure that those who are the neediest among us can have their fill. The work of the Saturday lunches at Trinity continues to provide nourishment and outward sign of our internal belief that all people are given the grace of God in a sometimes harsh world. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as a food and drink. We give you thanks. Uh, um, oh, let me switch. I had my wrong thing there. Let us pray this together. May God, our refuge, be with you. And also with you. People of God, we lift up your hearts to the one who created you. We offer them to God, who writes words of hope upon our hearts. God's children come to the table of grace. We will feast on the wonders of the God who loves us. God, you took creation by the hand and you led it out of chaos. As the morning, first morning dawned, mountains trembling in the midst, running rivers which gladdened your heart. God of our lives, you created all of this for us giving us peace and righteousness to be our playmates in the fields of grace. But when we behaved, beheld the works of temptation, sin and death, we became their slaves, writing their lives on our hearts. Longing to be our God, you sent the prophets to call us to be your people, but we refused to listen. Finally, Jesus came, the bearer of truth and freedom for all, with those whose hearts are broken and those who long for your days of peace, we th sing our song of thanksgiving to you as we say together, Holy, holy, holy are you, God who forms our hearts. All creation finds refuge in your tender care. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes to set us free by your truth. Hosanna in the highest. You are our strength, God of holiness, and Jesus Christ is your Son, our Savior. When our lives are filled with despair, He is our hope. When we are lost and cannot find our way, He is our help. When the world closes its doors and hearts to us, He is our refuge. When sin and death hunger for us, He is our Redeemer, present with us in this life and in the one to come. As we remember his life, death, and resurrection, as he continues to reform us into your people, we proclaim that mystery called faith. Christ has died. Christ, is, uh, Christ died. His heart broken for us. Christ is risen. Resurrection written upon his heart. Christ is ever with us in every moment until your days come. Pour out your spirit upon the gifts on this table and upon the gathered people over this world who seek to be your faithful people. The bread symbolizes that life, though, through, though given, which can reshape our brokenness into the peace which a warring world needs, a hope which can bring healing to others. The cup is filled with your grace, can strengthen us to be new people who go forth to speak truth to power, who bring freedom to all the oppressed. And when the days of eternity finally come, when we gather as your children around the table of wonder and life, we will sing your praises forever and ever. God in community, holy in one. Amen. This, uh, um, this is the bread and this is the cup. Let us pray. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Take the bread, take the cup, eat. It's really big, sorry. And now let us add our singing to the song of creation already in progress as we sing Amazing Grace. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers torn, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. When we've been there ten thousand and ears bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun Hear these words of benediction. Because God has not forsaken us, we will go to be with all rejected by our world. Because Jesus has not left us alone, we will be sisters and brothers, siblings to all who are lonely. Because the Spirit has not forgotten us, we will remember those who are oppressed and work to bring them justice. Amen. <laughs>